So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, glad to be back here as Body Mind Movement and have a moment uh, to speak today about one component of the work I do in integral body work. And I wanted to focus on the subtlety of the body and there, the subtle energy flows that are in the hierarchy of how the body is developed. Um, and, and, and in speaking to that, then I will share a client story uh, that has me really lit up, um, re relevant to the subtle body uh, healing experience. Um, just to say a word, as we all know, since from the 70s, there's been this progressive migration of Eastern healing modalities towards the Western allopathic medicinal practices. And we're living in a very rich moment where those two systems are actually uh, finding integration. And that's generating a new, a new creature, you could say, a new view of how to see the body as an integral whole, but more deeply with the subatomic physics that's out there, is it's a living whole, which I'll just say as many of us are reflecting on that matter is actually a form of consciousness. So when you start to penetrate the idea that the field that we come from is generating us and our wellness is in resonant dependence on the subtle field, the low form, uh, then the whole conversation shifts in terms of how we establish well-being in our body. So the subtle body has been tracked for many thousands of years. Certainly Jamie Lieber can tell us about that in acupuncture and Ayurvedic traditions. And though it, it flows as the current of life in the body. And it is flowing first before there's form. Certain practitioners have the ability to sense that flow. And when the flow is in balance, that correlates to a vibrant health, a good healthy system. When it's out of balance, that's where there's dissonance, disruption, illness, um, cancers, etc., etc. So the resonant field is what we're talking about with wellness. I had a recent client um, I had a recent client who was uh, referred to me by a naturopath. He, this is a young male professional, middle 30s. He comes in presenting a, an undiagnosed pain behind one of his eyes that is affecting uh, his sight, it's affecting uh, his, you know, headaches, pain, con various things. He's been to every allopathic modality. He's had MRIs, he's seen an eye specialist. There's not an allopathic doctor who was able to see anything that was supporting why this consistent constriction was there. To the point that they were actually saying, well, we have to create a new syndrome because we don't know what this is. Right? Man's, man's desperate because this is inhibiting his life. Desperate might be too strong. <laughs> so he comes to me in that condition. I take a full history. Nothing in the history I'm getting that would point to an eye problem. Uh, and, then, and then I begin to ponder and, and as I get, get his reality and his history, I'm asking is there anything that you don't want to look at in your life? Right? I asked that question. No, not really. So the next thing we do is we go to the table and he lies down and I go and cradle his head in a cranial sacral um, kind of an approach. And as I, I paced and led him into a deep relaxation, so he's dropping into his back body, the body's becoming very quiet and tranquil kind of like that integration stage that Rick was pointing to, very receptive. And in that, as the body quiets, the, the resonant field becomes louder, right? It becomes more, more perceptible. So I'm holding his head, 
And what starts to happen in my hands is the pulsations are generating the map of how the current is interrupted in terms of flowing through the head. And it, it's very, uh, it's, it, it's giving me direction thermally and energetically. So I follow that, make subtle adjustments to the cerebrospinal fluid, uh, move into particular holds from a cranial sacral point of view that lift the sphenoid bone inside the head. There's a beautiful bird-like bone that sits in the center of the skull and you can lift it. Uh, you can manipulate it. It actually looks a little bit like a bird. So I always think that the bird's starting to fly <laughs> when, when we do that. But in any case, it takes the pressure off sinuses and various other things. So I'm working with the sphenoid bone and the cranial plates and he starts to report sensations up and down that same side of his body where the, the, the pain is. And he's telling me images that are coming up. He's feeling something all the way down in his foot and then his hands clench like this suddenly and he lets them go. Within a brief period of time he says, I remember, he was remembering a car accident when he was 18. He was the driver, he had a car load of passengers, <clears throat> he lost control at a high rate of speed, went off the road, into the air, hit a, a post. The car hit the post, the post went through the engine of the car, the car landed, and his head propelled through or into the windshield, left a dent in the windshield, and it was the left the side of his face that had the um, impingement. So as that story came up, it became clear to both of us that that trauma, which he had not allowed himself to fully realize, he didn't, you know, he didn't let it fully realize that that was, he, he was, the fact that he's alive is like a miracle, so much so that when the other individuals in the car came to, because they were they said, I don't believe we're alive. So it was a celebration. And uh, so a serious trauma at the, at the back of the eye problem from the impact. And so now we're starting to unwind the congestion with some Feldenkrais movement, eye movement, and collaboration with other of his um, care providers. So I just find that exhilarating. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, what I want to say, uh, just in closing, is the value, and I'm just going to lean into that last point, Rick, in your point, because I, the, the integration stage is truly that. And if we can find ways in our lives to create a gentle stillness and go into the stillness the wisdom in the body does the integration, it grounds us, it integrates the fabric of our experience into our being so that we're, we're, we, we, we can actually stand where we are, if that makes sense. So there's an enormous benefit to um, moving into integrative stillness. So that was my uh, story for today, and um, the handout has a footnote to, if you want to know more about energetic healing, you can certainly Google energy healing, and you can also, um, the book there I referenced by uh, Deepak is kind of a fundamental premise on energy medicine. But subtle body energy is what we're all, it's living us. So it's, it's, it'll be an interesting journey for all of us to wake up to how that functions. So do I have any time for a One question? Minute. One minute for a question, says Bill.